Alright guys, here is part two of your multiple choice um, final exam review. Um, it's going to start with number 31. Alright, so for number 31, we want to find the real zeros of this function. Um, one of the things that you can do is you can use the calculator for this. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and plug it into my calculator and see what the graph looks like. Let's turn it on first. Clear. Um, so I have y equals, I'm going to go ahead and clear this out, that was from an earlier problem. I have 6x to the 4th plus 11x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 2. Let's see what the graph looks like. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. Okay, so we can see right here, this is at negative 1. Your negative 1 is being used twice, okay, because it bounces back, so your negative 1 has a multiplicity of 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use synthetic division to find exactly where all of my zeros are. So I have negative 1. I have 6x to the 4th, 11x cubed, 2x squared, minus 5x minus 2. First term goes straight down, so I have 6, negative 6, that's 5, negative 5, so that's negative 3, uh, 3, positive 3. Gives you negative 2, positive 2, get a 0. You should get a 0 here since negative 1 is um, a 0. I'm going to go ahead and do it again because it does have a multiplicity of 2. So 6 goes straight down. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. Straight down. 6 times, or negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Add straight down. Gives you a positive 2. So now we have the quadratic uh, 6x squared minus 1x minus 2 that we need to solve, set it equal to 0. So I'm going to go ahead and use my quad program. Ah, oh, it's gone. All right, not using the quad program. <laughs> um, I'm going to pause this recording and I'm going to reinstall it. Hang on. All right, so I got the quad program reinstalled. So let's try this again. There it is. So a is 6, um, b is negative 1, c is negative 2, and that gives me 2 thirds and negative 1 half. So my zeros are at negative 1, 2 thirds, and negative 1 half. So negative 1, 2 thirds, negative 1, oh, there it is. Answer for 31 is going to be C. Now, if you forget all of this, we can go back to the graph. Okay. Now, you can see we have the negative 1 right here. We need to find this 0 and this 0, and I'm going to do that graphically. So I'm going to hit second, trace, and I want to calculate 0. So I'm going to go ahead and go to number 2. I'm going to move this over until I'm above the 0, hit enter. Below the 0, hit enter, enter again. And you can see I have a 0 at negative 1 half. So that's that one. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So second trace, number two. I'm going to go ahead and move so I'm at my left bound. Whoops, went too far. So left bound, hit enter. Right bound, enter, ignore the guess. And then you get two thirds, which was our other zero. So you can do this graphically too, as long as you remember the steps. 32. Um, find all the zeros for the function, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, so I'm going to use this graphically. I'm going to clear that out. So I have x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 8x squared minus 16x plus 16, and we're going to look at this graphically. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out, so I'm going to hit zoom and then 6 
to get a full picture of what it looks like. Well, that didn't really do much. Um, okay, so if you look at this graph, you have a zero at positive two, which means you have a multiplicity of two at positive two since it bounces back. So since I have a zero at two, I'm gonna go ahead and use synthetic division um, to break it down so I have a quadratic just like you did for the other problem. So I have one x to the fourth, negative four x cubed, eight x squared, minus 16 x plus 16, down to, uh, there's your remainder box. Now your solution for this is not just going to be two, okay? Because this has a multiplicity of two, um, which means we should have four zeros, but just listing the two is not gonna give you four zeros. So we're gonna continue with this. First term goes straight down, multiply, straight down, multiply, straight down, multiply, straight down, multiply, Okay, I'm going to do it again because it has a multiplicity of 2, or it has an even multiplicity anyway. Um, first term goes straight down, combine, multiply, combine, multiply. Alright, so we started with an x to the fourth. This would be an x cubed. This is an x squared, so I have x squared plus 4x equals 0. If I continue to solve for x, I get x squared equals negative 4. Take the square root, and you get x equals plus or minus 2i. So I have zeros at 2 and plus or minus 2i. But Ms. Novacek, you're supposed to have four zeros. Well, we do have four zeros. This 2, it has a multiplicity of 2, so this is used twice. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 32 is C. 33, find a polynomial that has a 0 at 2 and a multiplicity of 2 for zeros at 0 and negative 3. So if I have a 0 at 2, that means I have a factor of x minus 2. I have a 0 at 0, so that means I have a factor of x with a multiplicity of 2. And then I have a 0 at negative 3, so I have a factor at x plus 3 with a multiplicity of 2. And then this, you just need to multiply out. I'm going to go ahead and distribute the x squared into that first parenthesis. So that gives me x cubed minus 2x squared. This I'm going to square double square, so that's x squared plus 6x plus 9. This you just need to multiply out, so x cubed times x squared is x to the fifth. x cubed times 6x is 6x cubed. Um, x cubed times 9 is going to be, that needs to be an x to the fourth. 6x to the fourth, x cubed times 9 is 9x cubed. Negative 2x squared times x squared is negative 2x to the fourth. Negative 2x squared times 6x is going to be negative 12x cubed. And then negative 2x squared times 9 is negative 18x squared. Combine my like terms, I have x to the fifth uh, plus 4x squared minus 3x cubed. Sorry, x to the fourth. Shoot. Uh, what was that? x to the fourth. There we go. So I have x to the fifth, 4x to the fourth, minus 3x cubed, and then finally minus 18x squared. My solution is B. All right. 34, find a fourth degree polynomial that has the following zeros, uh, negative 2, 3, and 2i. Um, imaginary zeros always come in pairs, so you do need the conjugate pair for that. So you have another zero at negative 2i. So if I have a zero at negative 2, I have a factor at x plus 2. If I have a zero at 3, I have a factor at x minus 3. If I have a zero at 2i, I have a factor at x minus 2i. If I have a zero at negative 2i, I have a factor of x plus 2i. And then we just need to multiply all this out. Um, this 
I can go ahead and multiply out. That gives me x squared minus x minus 6 once you FOIL it out. This, when you multiply it out, you get x squared plus 4. And then you just need to multiply this out. So x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times 4 is 4x four squared. Negative x times x squared is negative x cubed. Negative x times 4 is negative 4x minus 6x squared minus 24. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it. So x to the fourth uh, minus x cubed minus 2x squared minus 24. I lost my x. Minus 4x minus 24. So 4x to the fourth solution is C. All right. Um, 35, which of the following is the equation for the given graph? So you have a 0 at negative 2, which means you have a factor at x plus 2. You have a 0 at 2, um, so you have a factor at x minus 2. However, if you look closely, it bounces, okay, which means that needs to have a multiplicity of 2. And then you have a 0 at 3, so you have the factor x minus 3. So let's see if that's enough to give us our answer. I have x plus 2, x minus 3, x minus 2 squared, x plus 2, x minus 3, x minus 2 squared. Uh, so c can't be a solution. Let's see here. All right, so then we just have to pick between a, b, and d. To be able to do that, we need to solve for a. And the way that we can solve for a is by looking at your y-intercept. So when I plug in 0 for all of my x's, that should give me a negative 4. So that gives me 2 times negative 2 squared times negative 3. So that's 4, 8 times negative 3 is negative 24. So a equals 1 sixth. So my solution is B. Um, use the, the figure shows a graph of this. Determine the value of A. So I have a 0 at 2, so I have a factor at um, negative. I have a factor of x minus 2. I have a 0 at negative 1, which has a multiplicity of 2. So this means this has to be a factor of x plus 1. So A has to equal negative 1. So 36 is going to be B. All right, let's see here. Match the following equations with the appropriate graphs. So in this case, you have a 0 at positive 1, multiplicity of 3, which means it's going to cut through the graph, a 0 at negative 2. So I need 1 at 1 and negative 2. 1 and negative 2, except this doesn't cut through the graph, so that's not going to work. 1 and negative 2, this one should work. So our graph for 1 is going to be C. Let's look at 2. I have a 0 at negative 1 with uh, cuts through with a multiplicity of 3 and a 0 at positive 2. So negative 1 and positive 2. Negative 1 that cuts through, positive 2 that cuts through. So my graph for 2 is going to be F. 3, I have a 0 at negative 1, cuts through, positive 2, let's see, negative 1, positive 2, negative 1, positive 2, so my answer for 3 is going to be A. And then for 4, multiplicity at negative 1 is 2, so it's going to bounce back at negative 1 and it's going to cut through at 2. So for 4, the correct answer should be oh, one of these two. We have to pick one of them. OK, um, so since we're choosing between these two, I'm going to go ahead and graph this in the calculator. No, it's frozen. Oh, there we go. Just had to hit clear. <laughs> My bad. So I have 1 half. And you could graph all of these if you really wanted to. I was trying to avoid that just by using logic. 
guess logic didn't take me very far with this. Scrap it. Uh, so that's going to be E, which makes this one D, using some logic. And then process of elimination, this one has to be B. So there you go. You can look at the zeros and you can look at the multiplicities. Um, if you need to, you can always graph them on the calculator. All right. 38, um, write it in exponential form. So I'm starting with my base for my log. It's the same thing as my base for my exponent. So I have a to the x equals y, a to the x equals y. So 38 is going to be d. Um, evaluate log base 5 of 8 using the change of base formula. We can use the change of base formula if we want to, or since we have our lovely TI-84, I'm going to hit alpha window, select number 5. My base for that is 5, and there is 8, and that gives me 1.2920. Change of base formula, that would be log of 8 divided by log of 5 if you wanted to do that which would give us the same thing. There you go. Might as well use a shortcut. Alpha window number five. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. Go back to this. Okay. Um, rewrite natural log for natural log of 3 minus 1 half natural log of 9 as a single logarithm. So I can take my numbers in the front and bring them up as exponents. So that gives me natural log of 3 to the 4th minus natural log of 9 to the 1 half. 3 to the 4th is 81. 9 to the 1 half is the same thing as the square root of 9, so natural log of 3. Since I'm subtracting, I can divide what's inside the logarithms. So that gives me a natural log of 81 divided by 3, which is going to be natural log of 27. So 40 is going to be C. Um, rewrite this as a single logarithm. I can bring up the 3 as an exponent. So I have log of 2 plus log of 4 cubed, which is 64. Since I'm adding my logarithms, I can multiply what's inside the logs together. And that gives me log of 128. So my answer for 41 is going to be D. Um, 42, write as a sum, difference, or multiple of logs. So all of this is being taken with the fifth root. So I can write this as log of x minus 1 squared over x minus 3 x plus 2 cubed all being raised to the 1 fifth so I can take that 1 fifth and bring it to the front so I'm gonna have a 1 fifth in front of my solution which means I can eliminate a and I can eliminate C now inside I just have to expand so since I'm dividing you're going to be subtracting so this would be the same thing as log of x minus 1 squared minus log of x minus 3 minus log of x plus 2 cubed. I'm going to go ahead and put all of that with the 1 fifth in the front. And then, of course, you need to bring down your exponents because you can't have exponents when you're expanding logarithms. So my solution is going to be B. Forty-three, write as a sum, difference, or multiple of logs. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and take this seven and move it to the front. So you should have seven in front of everything. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate D because that doesn't make any sense. I'm going to eliminate C as well because when you're expanding with the sum, difference, or multiple of logs, um, you should be adding or subtracting. So I have my 7 on the front. These two I'm multiplying, so it's going to be a log of x plus 3 log of y. I'm dividing, so it's going to be minus 2 log of z minus log of w. And of course, all of that is being multiplied by 7. So my solution for that is going to be a. Now, please be careful when you're picking between a and b. The only difference between this is this plus over here. And a lot of people want to choose this because technically you are multiplying down here. However, 
what's really happening is you're taking these two terms and dividing by both of these. So both of your log of z's and log of w's have to be minus. 44, solve for x um, in common log form. So I have a log of 8. I'm going to go ahead and take the log of both sides since I'm solving for that exponent. I don't know why I put 48. 40! x I can bring down to the front. So I have x log of 8 equals log of 40. Divide both sides by log of 8. And you get x equals log of 40 divided by log of 8. So my solution for 44 is going to be 44 Oh, not B. Sorry, don't make this mistake. Your answer is D. Okay, you can't combine these in the same logarithm, so it needs to stay as log of 40 over log of 8. I don't know why I circled that. Got thrown off for a second. All right, 45. Switch. Okay, so solve for x to the nearest hundredth. So I have 5 to the x equals 32. I'm going to go ahead and take the log of both sides. x goes down, so I have x log of 5 equals log of 32. Divide both sides by log of 5, and I get x equals, I'm going to use my calculator, so I have log of 32 divided by log of 5, which gives me 2.15. Now, if you forget how to solve this, you can see answer choices since it is multiple choice and just start plugging things into the calculator. So I'm going to try 5 to the 0.46. See if that gives me 32. Didn't work. 5 to the 0.8. 1. See if that equals 32. Nope. And then 5 to the 2.15. It should give me something close to 32, which it does. So my solution for that has to be C anyway. Uh, solve for x. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and um, this you can do with logs or you can do by breaking apart your bases. So I'm going to leave this as 4 to the 2x minus 7. I'm going to go ahead and break this apart. Um, 1024, I'm going to divide by 4. It's 256, divide by 4. 64, divide by 4. 16, so 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. So that's going to be 4 to the 6th. Let's double check that. Maybe I lost track of my 4s. I did lose track of my 4s. I'm guessing it's 4 to the 5th. Let's try that. There we go. Okay, so now that my bases are the same, I can drop my bases and set my exponents equal to each other. Add 7 to both sides. So you get x equals 6 for 46. Um, this I can break apart. I don't think you can get 243 in terms of 9. Not fully in terms of 9, so I'm going to break apart both sides. So 9 I can write as 3 squared to the 5x. 243 I can write as 3 to the 5th. Yeah. to the 3x minus 2. When you raise a power to a power, multiply your exponents. That gives me 10x equals 15x minus 10. Subtract 15x from both sides. And I get x equals 2. Um, solve for this x. Your log over here is a base 10. So if you ever have the same base with your exponential, it cancels each other out. So then you have 3x minus 11 equals 40. Add 11 to both sides, you get 3x equals 51. So you get x equals 17. And the reason why that it cancels out like that is if I were to change this to exponential form, I would have 10 to the 40th equals 10 to the 3x minus 11. And these would drop anyway. 
So you get 40 equals 3x minus 11, which is the same thing we ended up with up here. Uh, 41, same thing, your natural log is the same thing as a log base e, so that cancels out, so you're left with 5x plus 3 equals 22. Subtract 3 from both sides, you get 5x equals 19, so x equals 19 fifths. So my answer for 49 is going to be a. Um, for this, I need to simplify these logarithms together first. So since I'm subtracting, I can divide. So I have a log of 1 minus 2x over x minus 1 equals 1. I can change this to exponential form, so that's 10 to the 1 equals 1 minus 2x over x minus 1. I'm going to go across multiply these two. So that leaves me with 10x minus 10 equals 1 minus 2x. Add 2x to both sides, add 10, and you get x equals 11 twelfths, which is C. Does that actually work? I'm guessing it doesn't. Well, let's double check our answer. If I take 11 twelfths and plug it in for x over here, it's going to give me a negative number. So my answer is not C, it is D. Um, not going to work because what's inside your logarithm cannot be negative. So be careful. Don't make that mistake on your final. Always double check your answers. Um, for this, I can combine these logarithms over here. Since I'm adding, I can multiply. So that's a log base 4 of x squared plus 2x equals a log base 4 of 3x plus 56. I have logs on both sides, which means I can cancel out my logs, drop my logs. So x squared plus 2x equals 3x plus 56. I'm going to get this equal to 0. I don't know why I put 5x. I have x squared minus x minus 56 equals 0. I can factor it's x minus 8, x plus 7. Two possible solutions are 8 and negative 7. Before you say that those are solutions, double check them, just like we had to do with number 50. If I take negative 7 and plug it in, you're taking a log of a negative number. So my solution for 51 is going to be D. 52, you win $10,000 in a state lottery and deposit the earnings into a bank account. The money is invested at a rate of 6.2% compounded continuously. How many years will it take to double your money? You're going to use the PERT formula because that's for compound, um, compounding continuously. So my principal is 10,000 e to the r. My rate is 6.2. Don't forget to change it to a decimal. And we want to know how many years it's going to take to double your money. So we're trying to see how long it takes to get to 20,000. Um, isolate your ex exponential. So I have 2 equals e to the point zero six two t. Um, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. Natural log of e is going to cancel out, so I have natural log of 2 equals 0 0.062t. Divide both sides by 0 0.062. And I get t equals, so I have natural log of 2, divided by 0 0.062, gives me about 11 years, which was d. Now, if you forget how to solve this process, and you know that you have to use this PERT formula, what you can do is I'm going to go ahead and set it up in green over here. I can set this up as 10,000 e to the point 0, 0.062t, and you can take these and just plug them in for t and see which one of the amounts ends up being close to 20,000, because you're trying to double it. So I have 10,000 e, so I'm going to hit second natural log, to the point 0, 0.062 times, we're going to try 0.11. Should give me something close to 20,000 if it's a solution. That doesn't work. Use the up arrow key to edit that. Next, 1 
0.12. Doesn't work. Four point eight six doesn't work. Well, we already know the answer is going to be D. Eleven point one eight, and that gives me pretty close to twenty thousand, which is what we're looking for. So in the green, use the calculator to check answers. So you can take these and just plug them in. Um, find the initial amount invested at 7.14% interest compounded quarterly if after six years it has grown to $20,000. So your formula for this is you have your principal times 1 plus R over N to the NT. I believe you're given these formulas for your final, but I will double check, so don't take my word on that. Um, we want to find out what our principal is, but our final amount is $20,000. Our rate is seven and a quarter, so that's 0 0.0725. Compounded quarterly, so that's over four to the four T, so six years. Uh, that I'm gonna simplify. So one plus 0 0.0725 divided by four. 1.018125 being raised to the 21st, 24th power. So I have 20,000 divided by 1.018125 to the 24th power. 12,995 and 82 cents. There you go. All right, cool. 53, determine the annual rate of interest compounded continuously for a sum of money and account to quadruple in 25 years. So compounding continuously means you're using PERT. Oh, that wasn't right at all. So we want to know how long it's going to take for your principal to quadruple. So your final amount is going to equal 4p. And we're trying to figure out your rate. And it's in 25 years. So divide both sides by p, you get 4 equals e to the 25r. I can take the natural log of both sides. Natural log of e cancels itself out. Divide both sides by 25, and you get r equals natural log of 4 divided by 25, 0 0.0555, so that's about 5.55%, which is letter B. I don't like this green color. I'm going to go back to blue. Um, find the matching conics. This is a parabola because you only have an x squared. Number two, this is an ellipse because you're adding your x squares and y squares and your numbers in front are different. For number three, this is a circle because you're adding and the number squares are the same. And number four is a hyperbola because you're subtracting, and the numbers in front of x squared and y squared uh, don't really matter. They don't have to be the same. Um, in this case, they're the same, so be careful with that. I don't want you to assume that it's a circle, but you do have that subtraction, so that makes that a hyperbola. All right, we're almost done. 56. Write the equation of the circle in standard form. So I'm going to go ahead and rearrange so my x's are together and my y's are together, and I'm going to factor out my leading coefficients. Actually, I'll just show you all of my work. I'm going to move this to the other side, the minus 2. I can take out a 2. I'm going to put this down here because I'm going to run out of space. Insert some blanks. So 
So I'll take half of 4 and square it, it gives me 4, but I'm really adding an 8 over here. Take half of 6 and square it, it gives me 9, but I'm really adding an 18. Factor. Uh, that gives me, oh, yep, that gives me 6 plus 8 is 24. And then this I can reduce, so I can divide everything by 2. You don't want to divide everything by 24 because this isn't an ellipse, and it's also not a hyperbola. So my solution for this is going to be A. Find the vertex focus and directrix of the following parabola. So this I'm going to go ahead and get it into HK form. That way I can identify P. So I have x squared minus 2x plus a blank equals negative 8y minus 9 plus a blank. Gives me 1 and 1. This I can factor, so that's x squared, just kidding, not x squared, x minus 1 squared equals negative 8y minus 8. I'm going to factor out the negative 8. Gives me negative 8 times y minus 1. So my vertex is at 1, 1. Plus 1, just kidding, because I'm taking out a negative. So my vertex is at 1, negative 1. So I can eliminate b as my solution. This parabola is opening down. Um, 4p is equivalent to negative 8, so that means p is equivalent to negative 2. For my focus, it's going to be it's moving down, so I have 1. This is going to be negative 1 plus p, so that's 1 comma negative 3. Well, that doesn't help us eliminate anything. My directrix is going to be y equals k minus p. So in this case, we had k plus p. Over here, we have k minus p. So k was negative 1 minus negative 2 gives me 1. So my directrix is y equals 1. y equals 1. So my solution for 57 is going to be A. 58, find the equation with the ellipse with vertices negative 3, 1, 7, 1, foci, negative 2, 1, 6, 1. Start by finding your center. Center is smack in the middle of your vertices. It's also smack in the middle of your foci. So in the middle of negative 3 and 7 is going to be 2. So it's going to be x minus 2 and y minus 1. So we can eliminate B. All right, the distance from your center to one of your vertices is what A is. So the distance from 2, 1 to negative 3, 1 is 5. The distance from your center to one of your foci is what C is. So C in this case is 4. And I can use the formula to solve for B. So it's C squared equals A squared minus B squared. So I get 16 equals 25 minus B squared. Uh, subtract 25 from both sides, and you get b squared equals 9. I'm not actually going to solve for b because you're going to square it anyway. So I have x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 1. Now, if you look at your vertices, it's your x-coordinates that are changing, which means it is a horizontal ellipse, so it's longer horizontally. So the bigger number is going to have to be underneath the x which means b squared is going to be underneath the y. So my solution for this is a. Oh, you could have eliminated c as well because of the minus. That indicates that it's a hyperbola. So 58 is a. 59, equation for a hyperbola where you're given the vertices and the foci. You're basically doing the same thing you did with ellipses. So we need to find the center. So my center is going to be at 2, 0. Distance between your center and one of your vertices is A, so that's going to be three units. Uh, center to your foci is C, which is five units. For your hyperbolas, it's C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So that gives me 25 equals 
9 plus b squared, so b squared in this case is 16. Now, when you're dealing with hyperbolas, you do need to pay attention to the direction. If you look at this, my y coordinates are changing, which means my hyperbola is going up and down. So that means for my equation, y has to come first. So I have y squared minus x minus 2 squared equals 1. So now at this point, we can eliminate c, we can eliminate d, we can eliminate a, because that's a plus. So my answer has to be b, but let's double check. Um, so a was underneath the y, so that's 9, and b squared is 16. The good thing with the ellipses is that a squared is always underneath the first fraction. So your answer for 59 is going to be b. And last but not least, 60. Which equation represents the graph for the given ellipse? Start by finding your center. You can look at this graphically. My center is at 2, 0, so I need to have x minus 2 and 0. Doesn't help. Well, you can eliminate b and d because these are minus, so that's for hyperbolas. Distance between your center and one of your vertices, so here, that's not a vertice, well, major axis. Horizontally is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units, so underneath my x I should have a 25. Underneath my y, I'm moving up 1, 2, 3, so underneath my y, I need a 9. So your solution for 60 is going to be A. All right, that's it. Hopefully the video helps you get prepared for the final exam. Good luck studying.